You know, we use this word all the time. We say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We say Fatiha all the time. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We use the word all the time. But what does it mean? Can anybody give me an English translation that you've read before? Ar-Rahman, anybody? Merciful. Uh, some people use benef beneficent, right? Compassionate. I, I don't know. Beneficent. Have you ever used beneficent in a conversation with anybody before? You don't normally use the word beneficent in conversation, yes? The purpose of translation, the purpose of translation is so you and I can understand. And translation should be with words that you can actually use, that you actually relate to. If you translate with words that you can't relate to, then it defeats the purpose of translation. It defeats the purpose. And the other problem is the, the easier word is merciful. Merciful is easy to understand for most people who understand English. They know the word merciful. But the problem with the word, there's also a problem with this word, is that it's actually different from the word rahmah. Mercy is different from the word rahmah. And I first want to explain that difference to you. A rahmah in Arabic comes from a few things. One of them is a rahm. A rahm is the stomach of the mother. When a woman is pregnant, her stomach is called rahm. And it's called rahm because that baby is taken care of in every way. A rahm is uh, 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 the, the child inside the rahm of the mother is taken care of in every way. Now there's a relationship between the mother and the child. Does the child know the mother? No. Does the mother already know the child? Something about that? Does she already have love for the child? Does the child have love for the mother yet? No. Is the mother taking care of the child already? Yes. In every way. In every way. The entire world of the child is taken care of by the mother. And the child has no idea, no clue that he is loved so much that the mother is willing to do so much for this child and protect it from every danger. Protect it from every danger. You know, the, 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 uh, uh, normally human beings, when they protect themselves, when they protect themselves, we protect our head, we protect our bodies. But a mother, before she protects anything else, what will she protect? Her stomach, when she's expecting. She's gonna be extra careful not to walk in a narrow place or to stay away from corners at the table, you know? She's gonna take extra caution. That word gives birth to the word rahma. Rahma is not the same as mercy. Because mercy in English is used when you spare someone. Like for example, I was gonna beat you up, but I showed you mercy. Which means you were expecting punishment. And when I decided not to punish you, that means I showed you mercy. Maybe a police officer stops you on the road. The policeman comes over to you. Hey, you don't know the speed limit? No, I, I was reciting Surah Al-Rahman. Uh, sorry, I just... <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll show you mercy. No ticket for you. I don't know if that's going to happen. Don't try it. But you were expecting punishment, yes? You were expecting a ticket. And then you use the word, oh, he showed me mercy. Meaning he let me go. In other words, in the English language, most of the time when we use the word mercy, we're actually thinking about punishment. And then the punishment went away and we thought about mercy. But the word Rahma has nothing to do with punishment. The word shouldn't even cross your mind. The thought shouldn't even cross your mind. It has to do with complete care and love. Someone who has compassion towards you. Someone who wants to be soft and easy with you. Someone who wants to make things delicate for you. They understand that you should be handled with care. You know, there are people who deal with other people delicately, nicely. And then there are people who are not very delicate, not very nice. Sometimes you want to get a visa to some country and the person you have to deal with is not very nice. They don't have riqqa. But if they have rahmah, they treat you with respect. They start with salam. They say, I'll do everything I can to help you. And you can notice they care about you. You're trying to do hajj or something and they care about you, you know. They're showing that riqqa. That's rahmah. When Allah calls Himself ar-Rahman, He is saying that He loves you. He is saying that he cares for you. He's saying that he understands that you are very delicate and you must be handled with care. And Allah will take care of all, every matter that you have.